This weekend we are celebrating Petertide, Feast of Saints Peter and Paul. The actual feast day is the 29th of June. Uh, with many churches across the land, it'll be uh, shifted uh, to this Sunday, the uh, 28th of June. I've got in my hand here a small New Testament and Psalms. A fairly insignificant little book, but when I open inside it, it says Dominic Mark Ind on his ordination as deacon in Manchester Cathedral on the 1st of July 1990 plus Stanley Manchester. So this wee book was given to me by Stanley Booth Clibben, who in 1990 was the Bishop of Manchester. And it was my ordination, as I've just read out, my ordination to the diaconate three decades ago on the 1st July, Wednesday this week. It's been quite a journey, an eventful, invariably enjoyable journey, had its moments, but certainly in the main an enjoyable journey, fruitful, colourful, I've learnt a lot. And in that journey, where I was a curate 30 years ago on the south side of Manchester, in a parish called Holy Innocence Fallowfield, I moved from there to, uh, well, go and walk about, really, in Asia. And I travelled across Asia from Beijing right the way across into Central Asia, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, back to London. And then I went back to Asia, actually, and spent some time in Japan, about three months or so. So from a curacy in Manchester to a wandering around in Asia which had much to do with exploring my interest in Eastern religions. And after that, I, well, I went to Hardy country, uh, West Dorset, rolling hills of Dorset, and I tested my vocation in the, in the Society of St. Francis, the Anglican Franciscans. And part of testing that vocation, I ended up in the east end of Glasgow in a scheme called Barrowfield, which is right next to Subtip Park. Continuing the theme of the East End, I then went to the East End of Newcastle. It's a sort of second curacy, really. I had the responsibility um, of a small parish, St Martin's Biker, working alongside a very experienced parish priest um, who had Christchurch Walker, which was a, a much bigger parish, and we worked as a team covering those two parishes, Raymond the big one, myself the small one. And then my journey started in the Scottish Episcopal Church on our side of the border over 20 years ago, spent over two thirds of my ordained life uh, here in Scotland serving in the Scottish Episcopal Church. Uh, we went from Cambus Lang to Bridge of Allen and for the best part of two years now, I've been serving you as your rector um, since uh, August, 4th of August, 2018. So, a great journey, and I like to think very much divinely led, maybe with the angels of the Lord leading myself, uh, and of course Anna as well, so all the time we've been in Scotland, we've been married, um, leading us along the way to different places, uh, to different parishes, uh, to different charges. Being led by an angel, that's what happened to Peter. It is, if like, part of the Petrine tradition. And there are a great few verses. I love these verses. Um, and I'll share them with you from Acts 12, if you've not already read them. These verses, Acts 12, 7 to 10. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. 
He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realise that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane, when suddenly the angel left him. I love that story. Some people may want to boohoo it, dismiss it, couldn't possibly happen. What do you mean the chains fell off, the iron gate opened, guards disappeared? Well, you can of course take it on various levels. Some may want to take that literally, some may not. But you know my line with these things. Um, there's an overriding message, whether we wish to go for non-literal or literal. We ask the question, what's the message in the story? Artists tend to pick up on these things very well, through music, writings, poems, whatever, paintings and so on. And whenever I hear this reading from Acts 12, I think of Charles Wesley. And Charles Wesley, as you probably know, the great Methodist 18th century hymn writer, he wrote thousands of hymns. But one of his most famous is And Can It Be. What a great hymn that was. And when he penned this hymn, when he wrote the fourth verse, I imagine Acts 12 was right up there um, in, in, in his thoughts as he was writing this, this wonderful hymn. Verse 4. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's might. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke, the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Wesley gets it. He's read about Peter's experience, and this is his experience. So it goes on to the last verse. No condemnation now I dread. Jesus, all in him, is mine. Alive in him, my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. And here it is. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. He has been set free. Boldly he approaches the eternal throne and claims the crown. Christ his own. It's great stuff. And a wonderful way of looking at this passage through one of our most celebrated British hymn writers. He gets it that we all have a sense of a need, if you like, of being set free. Of the shackles round our wrists, round our arms, being untied, removed, of being liberated. There are many sorts of prisons I don't know about you, but I've been spending the last few weeks reflecting on this movement, Black Lives Matter. For me, it's rather personal. Members of my family down south are black. And sometimes as I, th I think of them, knowing them relatively well, what it's like for them to be black and to be a British citizen uh, living in our society. But much closer to home, just 25 miles away down in Glasgow, 
other people, of course, have been oppressed down through the ages. We're just now thinking about slaves, um, which, of course, uh, um, we, we got much of our wealth from. Let, let's be honest. Somebody said to me the other day, because here in Scotland, we're, we're, we're up to our neck in this. Um, but what about maybe um, Irish Roman Catholics, 19th, 20th century, uh, being in Glasgow? A black person? An Irish Roman Catholic person finding doors closed, issues around schooling, issues around careers. Um, prejudice takes uh, many forms. I'm not diminishing um, a black person's experience at all, um, but there are there are other ways as well in which we have put people in boxes in which we've curtail, curtailed freedom, maybe, which, which many of us at St Michael's simply take for granted. I'm very aware in my own life um, that I've been dealt an awful lot of trump cards simply because of my birth. And lots of other people haven't been nearly so fortunate. But when we think of our own prisons, often not for those of us who do come from a relatively privileged place, quite often those prisons become quite acute within ourselves. And we can create our own prisons, often to do with our childhood. Maybe a lack of confidence, a lack of self-worth an inability to, to love ourselves. These prisons we need to be set free from. So whether the prisons are very stark, whether maybe coming from a black community here in the UK um, and feel incarcerated, shackled in very sort of crude terms, or whether it's an internal condition of which we want to be set free from. I would suggest today, at Peter Tide, reflecting on Acts 12, of an angel of the Lord leading Peter out of prison, being unshackled. We may ask as well an angel of the Lord to remove our chains, to be free. And so we may sing with Charles Wesley and all those who sung this hymn down through the ages, bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.